are my friends, doctors from India. I invite you all to this very, very special meeting at George Pompidou Hospital. Needless to say, this is a wonderful place and we are really thankful to Dr. Lapo that he decided to give us this venue for this very wonderful meeting which we are going to have in the next two days. I am Neeraj Joshi and I represent Piramal Healthcare. But uh, more than that, we are here today to celebrate the third IECR in continuation to the last year when we did it in London very successfully. People reporting, especially Dr. Shaw and Dr. Silvestri, that we have to start and move on to the lecture by Professor Silbert. So may I invite uh, uh, Dr. Silbert uh, to be with us. Sir. Again, I think it is very important, this initiative between uh, India and Europe. And uh, in fact, uh, we have all learned that we are Indo-European, definitely Indo-European. And uh, so this is a great initiative to uh, organize this exchange in the future uh, for research and for collaboration. Uh, I remember when I was a fellow of the Cleveland Clinic uh, some time ago, the most uh, talented uh, fellows were uh, from India. There was uh, no, no doubt about that. Uh, so uh, again, I have a lot of esteem for your country, and I would like that this today be uh, wonderful for you in this institution. Uh, so briefly, this institution has been built, in fact, 10 years ago, and uh, fortunately or not, we forgot one zero on the line of the research uh, building. So in fact, we spent 10 years to re-raise uh, uh, re money for having a research uh, building, but now we have the uh, first being able to say to the other specialties that it should be only cardiovascular center, and the second, we were able to inaugurate it uh, a few weeks ago. So now in this place, you have uh, uh, so uh, three cardiology departments, uh, two cardiovascular and cardiovascular surgery, and uh, you have uh, vascular medicine, uh, hypertension, uh, nephrology, and uh, on the other side, uh, you have uh, uh, 3,000 uh, 3, square meters of uh, research uh, on in cell units, which is in fact French NIH, coming from a very basic science to uh, projects on uh, uh, our device, uh, vascular device, valve device with Alain Carpentier, and uh, we have also valuable uh, stent uh, projects and uh, cell therapy. So, again, welcome in uh, Georges Pompidou. In 1987 in Lausanne, who is the professor of labor in Switzerland. Innovator of certain evolution technique for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has participated in development of percutaneous transplanar coronary angioplasty and is named as a pioneer in the stent design and development. This is very important. We should give a small. Uh, <laughs> so, in uh, 1977, when Grinsic, Grinsic started his technique uh, in September 1977, he, we were counting. With, with a single lesion success rate of about 80% to cross and to dilate. When things have changed, there is a single lesion success rate of about 98%, less than 1% myocardial infarction, less than 1% emergency surgery, sort of dissection line after the balloon angioplasty when the balloon was taken out. We had no idea whether this would hold or would not Implanted after uh, an angio angioplasty with a thrombus formation, without thrombus formation, but a dissection, and uh, uh, would transform this type of picture into a round lumen. And this is one of the first patients uh, who had a stenting of a native coronary artery, the proximal LAD. You can see the arrow here on the top. This was released in us six weeks after angioplasty. How did you initially deal with the challenges of stent thrombosis? Uh, very good question, Greg. Uh, the, uh, um, we adopted an extremely severe regime. I, I was on the phone with Val Fuster at the time, who was uh, uh, much into uh, thrombosis, and he suggested a regime where we uh, started with heparin, of course, then uh, put the patient on Coumadin immediately, but at the same time gave him aspirin, Diphyridamol uh, uh, and sulfin pyrazole. Yeah. Um, so this cocktail went on until the patient was completely uh, on cruise level with anticoagulation. And of course, we had uh, fairly high 
local problems, uh, a number of local problems from, uh, from the puncture side. The revolution came with uh, uh, triclopidin and then clopidogrel, of course, and that, made, uh, that changed our life. So what is your take on, on drug eluting stents? I have the impression that you should give uh, double, pla uh, double uh, antiplatelets, aspirin and uh, clopidogrel for four years. So if, if a patient comes with the possibility of having had to undergo surgery and other things, you are a bit in, in deep waters. This is why I uh, continued using non-coated stents uh, for a while. But nowadays, I think the, uh, the, with the newer generation of drug eluting stents, one uh, can ease it up and be quite liberal about it. Uh, the chairpersons will be Dr. Stone, Dr. Professor Anna Gribier, Dr. Silvestri and Dr. Shirish Shakhe from India. So I just hand over the mic to the chairpersons and the panelists to go ahead with this. In the meantime, uh, uh, Dr. Stone can go. The lady is uh, 74 years old, uh, had uh, two acute uh, MI in uh, inferior and anterior, and got a bypass surgery uh, in 1993. Two saphenous bypass, one on the LAD and the second on the uh, right coronary artery, and then she got a left mammary bypass on the marginal. It's quite a nightmare to put wires in this because they go uh, around the aneurysm and they the angles to go to the branches are not so easy, even with uh, uh, whisper-like wires. So, by we, in fact, we are able to first evaluate whether the first uh, uh, part, the upper part, was uh, s significantly uh, stenosed and not. And in fact, the FFR, if we can go to the FFR, uh, so we have a wire. Uh, regarding the first marginal, we completely agree with what was said and uh, by the way it was impossible to pass any wire and we didn't want to uh, play too much with this aneurysm because uh, as you will see we got a uh, distal uh, slight dissection on the first uh, uh, proximal uh, circumflex so uh, I think it was not worth to, to, to go uh, further in terms of the very first uh, circumflex the very first marginal, which by the way is protected by the aneurysm. Eight years later, he had a gold in the year 1999, not humbleized at that time. He left treatment after two years. He presented to us with, in July 2009 with angina and depression class 2 for one month, which increased to class 3 for the last one week. He was subjected to coronary angiography, which showed three vessel disease. Right coronary shows total chronic total collision in mid segment. Left circum left side chronic total collision after OM1, whereas the ramus has 70% stenosis in the proximal part. So, here we we initially referred the patient to CABG, but the patient was not interested, so we tried to do angioplasty. We tried multiple wires to cross the region and finally we could cross the region of chronic total collision with miracle work. So, I'm going to present a case of a uh, 22 year old male presented to us with history of chronic stable angina from the last two to three months in the form of pain epigastrium. Uh, that is still taken effectively. <coughs> And he is a bus driver and smokes 40 to 50 cigarettes per day, hypertensive and HDL cholesterol of less than 24 mg per deciliter. Uh, baseline biochemical parameter of the normal ECG so D, D inversion in lead V1 to V6. And actually there is a mild cardiomegaly with prominent bronchovascular markings, echo. And there is a regional wall motion abnormality in LAD with ejection fraction of 40%. Coronary angiogram was done we show the flush occlusion of LED. And uh, RC is normal, LC is normal. Uh, there was no stump, uh, next view. No stump was, uh, of LED was seen in that view. And then I decided to uh, probe the wire. Uh, the difficult uh, difficulty was that, that I don't, uh, at that time, I was thinking which wire to be used because once 
during probing, if I entered into the false lumen, then it will be a mess. Then I start with a BMW wire, and uh, once it catches the uh, sideband, then I was uh, sure that it's in the true lumen. Then I start dilatation with 1.5 into 10 millimeter balloon. Where was the stent from left main to from left, left main to proximal LED. Which part of left main to? It's just uh, from the origin of the left main. Uh, origin of the LED. Cuff cleaning of exertional chest pain. Investigations done all were within normal limits. Is it for the inconclusive ECG changes? Stress test was normal. Lipid profile was normal. Risk factor evaluation was also normal. She was subjected to uh, was subjected to undergo coronary angiography. We tried as a as you can see from the slides, it is actually when initially attempts to the left coronary, initial attempts to cannulate the left coronary arteries were not successful. So as an early stage, I thought let's take a shoot of right coronary renals and then maybe after some time we go for a left coronary. Keeping that in mind, we thought of doing a right coronary angiography which revealed an anomalous coronary artery which is found in 1-2%. to If you can go through the slides. Sir. I am Dr. Subhani from Galaxy Hospital, Tirunelveli, which is in the southmost corner of India, that is near Kanyakumari. Smoker came with, who had an inferior infarction some five years ago, the stable. For the past seven days, he had an unstable angina admitted there. And we did a coronary angiogram. Coronary angiogram showed a, a total cutoff of uh, left hand descending artery, and there is a lesion in the left circumflex. And the RCA is totally cut. And we, I try to open the um, right coronary artery. 38 year old male who presented to us with history of left side and chest discomfort, numbness of the left upper arm, and vomiting of less than one hour duration. He has been experiencing exertional breathlessness of class 2 since one year. He has been a high potency on etanol 50 mg since one year, was a dyslipidemic but was never on a statin. He was very strong family history of coronary artery disease. His father succumbed to the illness at 40 years and his elder brother also had my at the age of 41. He was not a smoker. At the time of presentation, the patient was in severe pain. He was uh, sweating. The heart rate was 74 per minute regular. Blood pressure was 140 over 100 millimeters of mercury. Systemic examination was normal, including the cardiovascular system examination. The electrocardiogram was showing only a minor T wave changes in leads 1 and AVL. And echocardiogram performed at 3 months showed a normal LB with absolutely normal ejection fraction. Next. Uh, the presentation today is uh, about a 70 year old male. 81, I've told 81. You're African American male with history of hypertension and diabetes and prostatic hypertrophy with moderate renal dysfunction. It was known to have colon CA and has GA bleed about two to three months before that. I was on call, I was on call on the night and then he presented with acute anterior MI and I took him to the lab. At the time, because of the comorbid situations, and uh, I decided to put him on bare metal stents only in the mid and uh, proximal LAD, mid distal and also in the proximal LAD. The mid LAD had about 2.25 by about um, the 32 millimeter vision stand. You know, coronary LV fistula did a huge binari and uh, probably I've never done, done to close it. Uh, it was so uh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe makes a very difficult stainless to deliver more. That's right. Yes, sorry. Yes, you know, the yeah. smallest available was 3 millimeter diameter there, so we tried almost for about 40 minutes. Yes, from Lawford, we had really enjoyed the clarity of the image was good, perfect. We could see all the cases, uh, yeah. with the, the picture, the films were very clear to our uh, expectation. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm very happy uh, we do our best, and I'd like to thank the team in the cat lab because uh, they are very, very efficient. Uh, so thank you, and uh, see. I'm here to present an, an interesting case of cumbering hand flow. A patient has been referred for pacemaker. In fact, uh, he had recurrent episodes of synco uh, with Stokes Adams for the past six months, and he never had an MR. But he had a big chest discomfort, which many of us thought that it's angina. So baseline ECG was normal and chop was done, it was negative. So I we mean, subjected him to a whole new study, which again revealed that there was intermittent company had problem, there was no STD changes. So there was a, a discussion as to whether to do a coronary angiogram. Most of us agreed that uh, before you put in a pacemaker, it just roll up a coronary artery disease. So that's what uh, we have done. Casting, you performed the first word case of your take, the blue casting, cancer fixed in 1985. <laughs> Vital commissionary was his device with the metallic barotone in 1995, which came up. 
will not be operated on. And this has been uh, tremendously uh, demonstrated by the uh, Euroheart survey uh, in 2004, uh, surveying uh, 5,000 patients in 92 centers in Europe and 25 countries, and 32% uh, of the patients with uh, aortic stenosis and symptoms were not operated on. <coughs> and we are not supposed to be operated on. And uh, this is a problem because, the, as you know, the survival of those patients with uh, symptomatic AS is extremely bad, and uh, grossly uh, 80% mortality within two years, and probably higher than that in uh, very old patients. So uh, it's a pity that nothing uh, can be done. So uh, this was a, a great uh, idea, and uh, on our side, uh, in 1994, uh, we started to uh, try to understand whether it was possible to maintain the valve open in the aortic stenosis with a stent, and we had at that time a, a, a PMS stent, and uh, uh, we did a study on post and trying to find out what could be the ideal length of the stent, diameter, the quality of opening, the quality of opening, and also we are very much concerned by the aspect of uh, cardiac structures. And uh, you see here an example of this uh, post uh, evaluation, and uh, we did uh, a series of 15 patients, uh, fresh cadavers of patients with hydrogenotic stenosis. You see here on the left the results of the plan and that we could clearly observe what would be the main issues. Uh, first of all, the coronary ostia are not that far away.